Flux is the latest open source model that everybody's talking about. And today I'm gonna to show you how to run it on a measly eight gigabyte card, which is what I have. So on the screen, you see the workflow here and links to all the models and the workflows will be linked in the description below. Unfortunately, I can't run it while I record, but if you look at the timestamp here, a minute and 11 seconds to run a 1024 by 704 image. I'm averaging about a minute 35 for 1024 by 1024. As for the rest of the workflow, it's pretty simple. You have your load diffusion model here and the dual clip loader note. The original model is like 24 gigabytes. The FP8 version that's out is only 11.8 gigs, I believe. And the same goes for the Snell model, which is a distilled model. It runs a lot faster, but you sacrifice some quality. For the dual clip loader, I'm using FP16. You could use FP8. There hasn't really been a difference in performance for me personally. And I'm running this with 20 steps. Now, obviously you can go higher, 30 to 50 if you want. I did want to kind of mention a few things. When you initially run the model, it's going to take longer because it's got to load the model and it's going to cache things like the prompt because it does use the language model. But once it caches everything, I'd say on the second, maybe even the third run, that's where it starts to really speed up. So I would suggest for you to run it at least three times, even up to five times. By the time you get to the third or fourth run, that's more of an accurate depiction of how fast it can run on your system. System. But keep in mind, if you change the prompt, change the model, your generation times will be longer just for a couple runs again until it caches everything. So that's a pretty big limitation, especially on an eight gigabyte card. If you've got 12 gigabytes, you may not have that issue. And I would suggest for you to close any extra browsers. You can't be watching YouTube at the same time or playing video games. If you're like me with an eight gigabyte VRAM card, all you could do is run Comfy UI and that's it. You'd have to sit it through. Now at the moment, there's only support for Comfy UI or if you're using Swarm, obviously it's got a Comfy UI background. It'll work with Swarm. Everything you need is on this Comfy UI page, even down to the workflows. However, I'm going to show you a different way to do this. The other thing I wanted to point out is that this FP8 version that uh, Comfy provides will load in your regular checkpoint loader. It's mentioned here, you just have to put it in your checkpoints directory and they recommend a CFG of one. The problem is this model is still 17 gigabytes. The original is 24, this one is 17. If you have a 3080, 3090, 4090, whatever the case may be, this might be a better choice for you. But for those of you that have lower end GPUs, I recommend that you use this FP8 version by Kajay, Kajai, however you pronounce it. And as you can see here, we have the FP8 versions of Dev and Snell, just under 12 gigabytes. So go ahead and download those. And then you need to go to your models folder within Comfy UI and put it into the unit folder. And then for the clip models, you wanna download these two. We have the FP16 and FP8 version. FP16 is 9.79 gigabytes, 4.89 for the FP8. And then once again, in your models folder in Comfy UI, you want to go to your clip folder and place the text encoders in there as well. Now you're also gonna need the VAE files. So on the original Black Forest Labs Flux Hugging Face page, where you can get the original model, that's 24 gigs. Here, the AE Safe Tensors, you wanna download that. And once again, you wanna head over to the main Comfy UI folder under models within the VAE folder and place that VAE into this folder. And within the workflow, make sure to load it here. As you can see here, I've got it selected, AE.SFT. SFT just means safe tensors and you should be good to go. Next, all you have to do is drag and drop the workflow into Comfy UI. This is the original version where it's more spread out. I'll provide a link for this one as well, but uh, the one I showed you earlier is just mine rearranged. And I also gave it some color. And as I said, I typically like to close the things that I'm not using, like the basic guider, the split sigmas, load VAE. You can open these up pretty easily. 
Now I'm gonna sift through a few examples here. And one of the things people are raving about with Flux is the fact that the hands and the feet are a lot better. Now in this example, we've got our typical five fingers. So this example, not the best one to show, but as always, I don't like to cherry pick results here. Let's take a look at these hands. Definitely much better. You can fix it with some high res fix, some SDXL in painting, and even a full body shot, we have pretty good definition on the face. Here's another one where it captures the hands pretty decently. They are, they do seem a little bit wonky, especially this finger here. If we look at the toes, not bad. <laughs> you know, from viewing distance, it looks pretty decent. Obviously it does photorealism very well. It can do a lot of styles. There are some artistic styles that you're gonna find that it doesn't do very well, but I do find in some instances like this where it has that old SD 1.5 issue with the two front teeth teeth look. I mean, it's not all the time if you prompt for, you know, a woman smiling or whatever the case, it looks pretty decent, but occasionally you'll get teeth that look like that. But in terms of skin tones and skin texture in the eyes, definitely pleasing results. Now, if you know me, I love my anthropomorphic raccoons. Again, the hands and the feet look really well. Prompt adherence is probably just as good or equal to SD3. I'm not talking about medium, but the one that's on stability site. I'd say on par with Auraflow, maybe a little bit better. But as you can see here in these examples, it can do anime styles. And the text coherency is actually pretty decent. Got a couple examples here. Saying Mons on media. Some more examples with text, this time in the background, it says what the flux, just like on the thumbnail that I used that turned out pretty well. This one I was doing sort of like a hybrid character, but yeah, you see the hands here, really good hands, especially with objects like swords and ax. It's not always perfect, but it does perform really well in that aspect. Another one where I have a samurai here holding this sign different variation. So if it's like three or four words, it does pretty well. And I saw this prompt on a Reddit post and I made my own version. It says that's how you do a next gen model. Now it's missing the U here, but it's pretty good. We have the Black Force Labs text here, stability here. So in this case, there's quite a bit of text and it did a really good job. This was another thumbnail idea I was thinking of where he was supposed to be punching him in the face. Now in this case, the prompt coherency was off. Maybe it's, it was the way I prompted it, but not too bad. This should have said eight gigabyte VRAM. Didn't pick up the V. I didn't run too many of these, but it captured everything in my prompt. This was done on the Schnell model and I was actually quite surprised it picked up the artistic style. Once again, nice hands, details in the boots, not bad. Gives great eyes. Again, we see those two front teeth. Doesn't look too bad. Just like any of the other models, close-up portraits does really well. You can see the skin textures here. There's a lot of detail that you can pull out of this model. Now the downside of using the FP8 model along with the split sigma is that sometimes you're gonna see this, or you're gonna see a little bit of artifacting. It's not always the case, it depends on the image you're doing, but it can be fixed with an extra step in your workflow. And holding weapons isn't gonna be perfect. As you see here, this finger looks messed up and the blade of the sword comes out of her elbow. As cool as it looks, it's uh, yeah, <laughs> kind of a fail. This one turned out really well. One extra finger, but I like how this hand grasping the hilt of the sword here, very cool pose. But I tell you the details from this model looks really cool. For a base model, it's quite versatile. But for me, it's always about the small details like the jewelry, the earrings, little particles around her here. And even in the eyes, that catch light in the eyes. In photography, that's something you always want to capture. And this model does that really well. This one I was quite impressed with. This is a prompt that I always do with any model. Hands look pretty decent. But even the details of the caliper here, you got the rotor here. Probably not exactly correct, but definitely passable. But again, with a lot of these newer models, it has some issues with doing celebrities. Now it can do some, but this one was supposed to be Zendaya from the movie Dune. I do like how she's holding the sword here. There's really no likeness of Zendaya, but I love the look and the outfit. And of course, the blue sphere on a red cube, the dog on the left, cat on the right, passed with flying colors. Here's a few examples. 
and I would say out of like 10 generations with this prompt, maybe one or two weren't exactly coherent. And this one, I was testing prompt coherency. And it was really simple. Two men in a bar drinking beer, laughing with a waitress in the background in a jukebox. You do see a little of the jukebox here. The waitress, I don't know what she's doing. But in this example, it was a lot better. You see the jukebox here. Hands are a little wonky on this one. You see the waitress in the background. But yeah, this one looks actually like a stock photo. Hands look good. Looks like the waitress is going to change what's on the jukebox. Now, I also heard that the first control net canny and a realistic Laura is out for Flex, but I don't think it's compatible yet with Comfy UI. I'm pretty sure it's going to be updated very soon. And when that happens, make sure to come back and I'm going to show you how you can work all of that stuff out. Now, in case you've been hiding under a rock, check out these videos on other open source models from Colors and AuraFlow, which actually has an update that I'll be showing you very soon as well. Until then, my friends, I'll see you when I see you.